Hi, everybody. Thomas Miller on the Fun Astrology video podcast here, audio podcast Monday through Saturday. Thanks for stopping by. We're going to talk today about Uranus going retrograde. This is Monday, August 28th, and Uranus turns retrograde. We've been anticipating this for really probably a couple of months, certainly weeks. But Uranus finally slows down and in the sky appears as if it was going backwards. That starts tonight at around 1040 Eastern Time. If you put the chart up for your local area, it should look something like this. In my chart, in the equal house system, Uranus is in the first house sitting right next to Jupiter, which is, by the way, the only other planet that is not in retrograde right now. The sun and moon never are. Right now, Jupiter is not retrograde, and it flip-flops with Venus next Sunday and Monday. Venus comes out of retrograde on Sunday. The next day, Monday, Jupiter goes in retrograde. So from now until the middle of, uh, uh, excuse me, of October, we are going to have seven planets in retrograde. That's why it feels like you are literally trying to climb a rope that has no support at the top <laughs> because everything is backwards. Now, Uranus represents a couple of things in astrology. For one, I like to think of, you know, if you had a cartoon image of a great big jack-in-the-box thing, you know, like from the carnival days, and let's say that that jack-in-the-box goes, boing, surprise! Well, that's kind of Uranus. It's the things, the sudden shock and awe that we're not expecting. And that can be good and that can be bad. I have a guy that I follow, a financial guy on Twitter. Many of you may know of him, Michael Huddleston, his ICT, the inner circle trader. He has taught the world how the market algorithms drive the price of the markets. His son, Cody, was in a motorcycle accident last Friday. So if you think about it, say a prayer for Cody. It's been trending, actually, on Twitter, and that's what it's about. So if you would, say a prayer for Cody. I know their family is in shock. The latest news that I have is of this recording, which is actually on Sunday, was that he was still alive, but it is very, very serious. That's also the challenging side of Uranus and its surprises. Now, one of the things significant about this retrograde, which lasts all the way until the end of January 2024, by the way, long retrograde, this is going to be something that we're going to be sitting with for quite a while. As Uranus goes retrograde, it is in the first house of this chart. And this is like a natal chart for specifically this Uranus retrograde. You can do this with any astrological change. Yesterday, we talked about Mars moving into Libra, and we showed that as a natal chart. This is like a natal chart for this Uranus retrograde. First of all, it's in the first house. That's about you. That's your how you project out into the world as far as how people see you, how others see you. In fact, a lot of people argue we're a lot more about our rising sign or our first house display to the world than we are our sun sign. And to some degree, I agree with that because I'm a Gemini rising and I come across very much as that, but I also come across my sun sign as well. But, so this is about us, the retrograde. Look at this. Uranus, right here, rules the sign of Aquarius right there. And Monday morning at about 1030, the moon entered Aquarius. The moon represents our soul in astrology, among other things. So this is about our very soul. And what about the 10th house? The 10th house often gets tagged to career, and that's certainly an expression of it, but it's not all of it. It's how you shine out into the world as far as what you do for humanity, what you do for society. What if you're a mom raising three kids at home? That's a very important job. You might be at the dinner party and everybody, of course, asks the rhetorical question, oh, what do you do? Well, that's 10th house. What they're saying is, what's your 10th house? <laughs> well, I'm the mom of, a, of three kids. Oh, that's a very important job 
especially if you're trying to raise them consciously, which is so difficult to do in the world right now, right? So it's not about your career or what you do Monday through Friday or how you get a paycheck. It's how you express yourself in the world. That is all going to come slowing way down until the end of January. <laughs> it's a time for us to look at all of that because in retrograde, we look at the rewords, retool, reassess, readjust, recompose, etc. You can put your own revise, you, know, you can put your own rewords in there for what your path is and for what your soul is. But this is not a time to try to move it forward. The energy is not there. It's a time to retool. And what it is is a time to retool who you are, not only for yourself, for others, but in the world. Another thing that Uranus represents is your hidden genius that is something that wants to express itself in this life. Usually it's below the surface at our birth, and it's something that comes up. But our hidden genius wants to have a little bit of time to have some rework done on it so that when we reemerge in February, that basically Aquarius rules technology, that we have retooled our techno self for this new phase of the world in 2024, because a lot of things are going to change, I think, between now and then. So it's very symbolic what's going on right now, and it is very deep in us because of that moon that just this morning crept into the sign that is ruled by Uranus. I hope this helps. It's really a significant retrograde. It's already had big impacts, and it's going to have impacts in the months to come. I'll see you on the audio podcast for more, and I'll be back tomorrow, and we'll talk about the full moon. See you then.